What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross. I like games. And today, we've got the FAQ from OP10. We've got a bunch of new rulings from the new set, which is coming out very shortly indeed. So let's start off with the leader, Sugar. We've got a skill with Sugar here, whereby... During your opponent's turn, once per turn, when you activate an event, you can set up to one of your Don deck from your Don deck as active. Nice. Okay. Well, during my opponent's turn, I activate the zero cost unbecoming kick course counter effect, which lets you trash a card from your hand and give up to one of your leader or character cards 3,000 power during this battle. But I chose not to discard a card from my hand. Can I still use the leader effect? Yes. Yes, you can. You activate the counter. Choose not to trash a card from your hand. Don't get the 3k bump. But because you activated the counter, even though you didn't actually do what you needed to do to get the bump, you still activated the counter. Therefore, you activated an event. Therefore, you do get a Don card active. When the trigger event of an effect is activated during your opponent's turn, can I add a card using this leader's during your opponent's turn effect? No, you can't. Essentially, this isn't activating an event card. This is having an event card come out as a trigger. They are not treated as the same thing. Now, there is a second skill with Sugar, and that is at the end of your turn, if you have a Don Quixote Pirates character with 6,000 power or more, set up to one of your Don as active. Well, if you've got a character that is Don Quixote Pirates, whose power is 6,000 power or more, but only because of effects which last until the end of the turn, when we get to the end of the turn, do you get to get one of your Don active, or does the boost until the end of your turn run out and you don't get to have the Don? The answer is yes, this skill will activate and then the power will return to normal. So if you've got a boost until the end of your turn, that's absolutely fine. You'll still get the Don activated. Now, Scotch has got a new card coming along in this particular set and we've got ourselves a blocker. But when you play, if you've got no rock cards, you can play a rock card from your hand. And then similarly, we've got a rock that says on play if you don't have any scotch cards. You can play a scotch from your hand. So if you've got four characters that are neither rock nor scotch, you play rock using its on play effect. But then you put rock into the trash to play scotch. Because remember, you'll have five characters out at that point. You can't play a sixth. So you put rock into the trash to play scotch. Can I then use Scotch's effect to play another rock? Yeah, of course you can. As long as there isn't a rock on the field at that moment, you can pop it into play and jobs are good un, which sounds like fun to me. Now, we do have Brownbeard coming in here. When attacking, if you've got one or fewer characters with 6,000 or more power, this character gets a 1k bump. Well, if I've got one character with 6,000 power or more, and this character becomes 6,000 power or more due to Dawn, can this character get 1,000 power with its when attacking effect? Yes. Yes, it can. Now, we do have a new Monet coming in this set. And with Monet, we've got an activate main, rest this character, give up to two rested Dawn cards to your leader or one of your characters, and then one of your opponent's characters gets minus 1k during this turn. Well, if I can't give two rested Dawn... Can I still get the minus 1,000 power? Yes. Remember the rule with One Piece. Anything in bold before the rest of the text has to be done to activate the rest, but then it's do as much as you can. You have to rest Monet, but then in terms of the giving two rested Dawn and minus 1,000 power, you're good. And similarly, if you can't give minus 1k, can you still give the rested Dawn? Yes, for the same reason we talked about before. Now, we do have a Trafalgar Law coming along in this set as well. And we've got ourselves a green and yellow leader. That Don X1 activate main once per turn. If the total cost of your characters is five or more, you can return a character to your hand and then reveal the top card of your life. And if it's a supernova cost five or less, you may play it. If the total cost of my characters is four or less, can I return one of my characters to my hand? No, because it's all one thing. It's 
if the total is five or less, return one to your hand. You can't just return and not play a character. Nothing happens unless the total cost is five or more. What happens if I reveal the top card of my life and it's not a supernova? Same thing always happens in this situation. You put it back to the top of your life, face down. Now we have a Kinemon coming along here over in green. Activate main. You may place this character and a Kinemon with a power of a thousand or more from your trash to the bottom of your deck in any order. And then play a Kinemon with a cost of six from your hand. And it is important it is a cost of exactly six. Well... For this activation effect, can I place two Kinemon from my trash to the bottom of my deck? No, that's not what the card says. It is one from your field and one from your trash. And then you can play the six cost from your hand. Now we got ourselves a new smoker coming in, which incidentally does look a lot like Toshigi, but isn't. And we got activate main, set one of your Don to active, and then you can't put Don cards active using character effects during this turn well can i put character cards active using the effect of the smoker leader yes because the card says you can't put cards active because of your character skills that's a leader skill not the same thing after activating this can i use the arouge from opio 7 which does put a dot active at the end of your turn no because the end of your turn is still your turn doesn't work Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, does not work. But we also have a Toshigi that looks an awful lot like Smoker. And what we got here is, if one of your green characters other than Toshigi lives a field due to your opponent's effect, you may rest this character instead. Well, if this character is rested and a green character leaves a field due to an opponent's effect, does that mean I can stop them? No, you stop them by resting Toshigi, if Toshigi is already rested, it doesn't work. What if this is active, and this and another character are KO'd at the same time? Can I use this effect to put this character to rest instead? Yes, you can. In this case, a green character isn't KO'd, because it's saved by Toshigi, and then Toshigi gets KO'd, but saves your other character before it happens. This is what I mean about needing to know these rulings. That is a kind of niche thing that I think some people are going to get wrong. But it's actually a very important ruling that you need to know. If two are going at the same time, you can use Toshigi to save the other one as Toshigi leaves. Now, we got Radio Knife coming in here, which has a main rest one of your opponent's characters with a cost of six or less, and then KO one of your opponent's rested characters with a cost of five or less. Well, can I do this to the same character? Rest a character with a cost of five or less and then immediately KO it? Yes. Yes, you absolutely can. We have a new Usopp leader, which I like very, very much indeed in this set. And what we've got here is, during your turn, once per turn, when one of your Dress Rosa characters is KO'd or leaves a field due to an opponent's effect, you may activate this skill. If you've got five cards or less in hand, draw one. Well, if your character is Dress Rosa and has a when KO'd effect, when that character is KO'd, which effect will activate first, the during your opponent's turn, as in the Usopp, to draw a card, or the when KO'd? Well, we know to deal with this. If you've got multiple skills that are activating, you get the choice as to the order in which they activate. When my Dress Rosa character is KO'd by an opponent's attack, can I draw a card? Yeah, of course you can. You're good. It's just KO'd or leaves the field by an opponent's effect, I suppose the wording here could be a little bit confusing, but it is KO'd in any way or leaves a field due to an effect. There we go. We also have ourselves a new Sabo in this set. If your character other than Sabo with an original cost of seven or less leaves a field due to your opponent's effect, you can return this character to its owner's hand instead. Well, and we, this is going to seem a bit familiar with Shigi we talked about a second ago. When this character and another are simultaneously KO'd, can I use this effect to return the character to my hand and save the other one? Just like with Toshigi, 
The answer is very much yes. Now there's a new Leo coming along. And when you play this, you may rest one of your leaders or stages. And then if your leader is Usopp, look at the top five cards of your deck. Find two non-Leo Dress Rosa cards, add them to your hand. Use your generic searcher, but you get two here. Although I should add that if you use this skill, you then have to discard a card from your hand. Well, what if you look at the top five cards of your deck, grab one or zero cards? Do you still have to discard a card from your hand? Yes. As soon as you use a skill, you lock in that you have to discard a card from your hand at the end. No matter how many cards you take with Leo, you will be compelled to trash a card from your hand when you're done. Now, Rebecca is one of the most exciting cards in the new set. On play, if you have a character with a cost of 8 or more, draw a card. And then reveal up to 2 character cards with a cost of 7 or less that are Dress Rosa, other than Rebecca, from your hand. And then one goes into play, and a second one with a cost of 4 or less goes into play rested. Well, if I reveal exactly one character, Dress Rosa, cost 4, will it appear in rest mode? No, it's active. The second one, if it's cost four or less, comes in rested. Otherwise, you're played active. Well, can I have character A appear as an active character and character B appearing as a rested character? Can I choose the order in which to activate the appearance effects? Yes, same deal. You are essentially playing the two characters at the same time. Both of their on play skills will activate at the same time. And you know at this stage that the rule is, if you have multiple effects activating at the same time, you get to choose the order in which they activate. Very important. When the number of characters, including this character, becomes four, this character is played, and then you choose to play character A active and character B in rest mode, placing character A in the trash. In this case, will the when played effect of character A be activated? No. Essentially, you play A in the fifth slot on your field, and then you immediately trash it to play B. It is essentially played and trashed in the same motion, and any on-play skill will not be activated. Cheeky way to try and use an on-play skill without using that character to actually take up a space on the field, immediately replace it, but it unfortunately doesn't work. It will just be trashed without ever activating the skill. Now send your pink going over into purple. On play, Don minus one. Add up to one purple event card of a cost of five or less from your trash to your hand. And then activate one of your Don cards. Well, if I don't add an event to my hand, can I still activate a Don card? Yeah, of course you can. Remember the rule I told you earlier when I tell you in every FAQ. If it's in bold, you have to do it to activate the rest of the skill. Otherwise, do it in whichever order you like. You are good, as much or as little as you can. Now, Fighting Fish has got Don X1. When attacking, Don minus one. KO one of your opponent's characters with a cost of one or less. Well, when attacking with this character with one Don attached, the attack effect of Don minus one reduces the number of Don attached to this character to zero, i.e. if you attach a Don, but then Don minus from it, can I KO my opponent's character of a cost of one or less? No. Because as soon as you Don minus one, you no longer have Don X1 on Fighting Fish, and you need Don X1 in order to activate this skill. Essentially, you're always checking, and the second you don't have Don X1, this skill just stops working. You Don minus one, but then you go, oh no, there's, there's no Don X1 anymore. It fails. Now, Treble comes along here of a rather handy skill. When played until the end of your opponent's next turn, all of your characters with an original power of a thousand or less cannot be KO'd by your opponent's effects. Well, what about Bonkere Bentham from EB01? You play this, and you activate the effect, and its original power becomes 2,000 or more due to its when attacking skill. Will it be KO'd? No. Because it had an original power of a thousand or less, you will be fine. Now we have a new Don Quixote do Flamingo coming along. Very interesting card. And we've got ourselves a rather lovely skill here. Whereby, on play, 
Don minus one, up to one character card that is Don Quixote Pirates, with a cost of five or less, can be played from your hand. And then during your opponent's attack, once per turn, you can rest one of your Don, and then add a Don card from your Don deck as active. Well, if I've got two of these on my field, and one active Don, and do two Don cards in my Don deck, and my opponent attacks, can I activate this twice and add two Don cards from my Don deck? Yes, you can. Essentially, what you do here is you use it the first time, rest one of your Don, add a Don card active, and then rest that Don to activate the second skill to add another Don card. Remember, you activate your skills in the order you want, but you still activate them separately, so the first skill gives you a Don that is active to use for the second skill. Now, moving over into black, we have a couple of rulings that don't seem particularly compatible. So, we've got, well, actually, we've got three. We've got Tony, Tony Chopper, Brooke, and Rowan Zorro, all of whom have skills whereby you can rest this character and one of your leader or stages with the characteristic Dress Rosa, and then Tony, Tony Chopper, if your opponent's got five or more cards in hand, they trash one, and then you trash the top two cards of your deck. Brooke, you KO one of your opponent's characters with a cost of one or less, and then trash the top two cards of your deck. And Rowan Zoro, you KO one of your opponent's characters with a cost of four or less, and then trash the top two cards of your deck. Now the question is, if you don't do the first thing, that is KO a character or make your opponent trash from their hand, can you still trash two cards from the top of your deck? And the answer is, with Brooke and Rowan Zoro, yes you can. If you cannot KO one of your opponent's characters, you can still trash the top two cards of your deck. But Tony Tony Chopper, if your opponent's got four or fewer cards in hand and you can't make them trash, you cannot trash the top two cards of your deck. So even though the wording is the same here, in terms of, you know, afterwards trash two cards on the top of your deck, Zoro and Brook, if you cannot KO a character, you can still trash from your deck. But Tony Tony Chopper, if you cannot make them discard a card from their hand, you cannot trash the top two cards of your deck. Remember that one, because it does look a bit weird. Now, Gum Gum Rhino Howlitzer, which is frankly a fantastic name for a card. It's got an activate main. Up to one of your characters with the characteristic dress Rosa gets 2,000 power during this turn, or plus 2k. And then if you've got 10 or more cards in your trash, that card gets Banish. Well, let's say I've got nine cards in my trash. I play this. Because I've played it, it goes into my trash, and I now have ten. Do I get to give Banish? Yeah, we saw this before with Dressrosa previously. Playing an event card, getting you to that number, will absolutely count. Now, Release is another card we need to have a look at, because there are a bunch of rulings about this. It's got a main, if you've got two or more characters fewer than your opponents, KO up to one of your opponent's original characters with a cost of six or less, and one of your opponent's original characters with a cost of four or less, i.e. if their costs haven't been modified. Add as a trigger, negate the effects of one of your opponent's leaders or characters during this turn. Well, can the effect that read, rules state that any number of this card can be in a deck, be negated, and we saw this ruling previously. Yes, but it doesn't actually affect the match. So technically, it does stop cards having more than four copies in the deck. But nothing actually happens because the deck is private. Which is a bit weird, but we have seen this before. We've got that same ruling we saw with OPO3 Nami. I negate the leader effect, and then my opponent runs out of cards. Nami's win condition is running out of cards. But that is an effect of the leader. That doesn't work. So they lose by deck out. It's another card that makes Nami basically unplayable. If a character whose effect is negated by this card's trigger effect is KO'd, do they get on KO effects? No. Their effects have been negated. Can this card's trigger effect negate the effects that the selected card has received from other cards? No. It only negates effects of the card, not effects that have been given to it by something else. These are incidentally all rulings we saw with Blackbeard cards we had earlier, but it's always worth a bit of a reminder. 
Now, Captain Eustace Kid is our mono yellow leader for the set. At the end of your turn, you can put the top card of your life face up. Activate one of your characters with a supernova trait that has a cost of between three and eight. And then that character gains blocker until the end of your opponent's next turn. Well, what if you've got a character that is supernova cost three to eight that is already active, but you just want to give them blocker? Can you do that? Yep. You target them. They're not made active because they already are. They gain blocker. Jobs are good un. Yay. Now, Inazuma, fun fact, that's literally just Japanese for lightning, has a rather nice trigger here, whereby if your leader is Revolutionary Army, and the total number of life cards between you and your opponent is five or less, activate this card. Well, does that mean including this card? No, this card will not be included, and it will only be used if the total life is five cards other than this card. Cool. Now, we've got a new Emporio Ivankov coming along here, which has got a skill whereby activate main once per turn, up to three of your Revolutionary Army characters get 1,000 power during this turn, then add the top card of your life to your hand. Well, if you've got zero life, can you just use this for the power bump and not add life to your hand? Yes, you can. Usual deal. Nothing there's in bold, so you just do as much as you can. Now, Heat and Wire is a jewel card coming along in this set pair of characters and we've got ourselves a trigger here if you've got two or less life play this card well does that include this card no this card is not included it will only appear when you have two other life cards very important electromagnetic gun is a card whereby as a main Look at one card from the top of your opponent's life and put it at the top or bottom of the life. Then KO one of your opponent's characters with a cost of five or less. What if I've got no life? Can I just KO a five cost or less? Same thing we've talked about, same ruling here. Nothing's in bold that has to be done. Therefore, you just do as much as you can. What if the top card of my opponent's life is face up? Can I look at it and then KO one of their opponent's characters with a cost of five or less? Yes, you can. Although, remember the ruling we saw before. If it's face up, it stays face up. So no matter where you choose to put the life at the end, it will remain face up. And finishing off, as always, with the secret rares. Luffy here has got a rather nice skill, whereby when attacking, you can place three cards in your trash to the bottom of your deck. And then if your opponent has five or more cards in hand, they must discard one. And then, of course, a really nice static skill, whereby once per turn, this character cannot be KO'd by my opponent's effects. Well, when this character of my choice is KO'd by my opponent's effect for the first time this turn, can I choose for this character to be KO'd? No, you can't. If you are choosing who gets KO'd, you can't choose Luffy, because Luffy can't be KO'd, therefore it's not a valid target. If my opponent has four or fewer cards in their hand, can I use this when attacking effect to put three cards in my trash at the bottom of my deck in any order? Yes, you can. You place three cards in your trash at the bottom of your deck, and then you go to trash a card from my opponent's hand. You can't. Doesn't happen. You move on. And then finally, we've got Law. On play, reveal a character card with a supernova trait from your hand. Add it face down to your life. And then give Arrested Dawn to your Supernova leader. Well, if my leader isn't Supernova, can I still add a Supernova character from my hand to my life? Yeah, we talked about this a bunch. Exactly the same as like 20 other rulings I've told you here. There's nothing in bold. Remember, if it's in bold before a colon, it must be done to activate the skill. As long as that's not the case here, which it isn't, you just do what you can. You can put a card on top of your life, so you do. You can't give a don to your leader, so you can't. Bit of a longer video here, but you know the deal. With these FAQs, I used to split them in two. People didn't really like it, so I don't anymore. Bunch of rulings. Over, I think it's 45 rulings here. But we talked about all of them now, so now it's over to you guys. Which makes sense, which are confusing. Do you have any questions? Do any of these make a difference to your plans? Let me know in the comment section. Go nuts. Be nice.
And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi. That's where we talk about One Piece and a bunch of other card games. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts, and all kinds of fun things. But by far the most important thing, as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching Wassy Plays.